Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to this wonderful training session on mobile app editing for the Grand Wikimedians uh, user group. Um, this is a meeting that um, brings together all the language communities under the Dagwan Wikimedians user group. So we have uh, members from the Kusal Wikimedia community, the Dagar Wikimedia community, the Mori Wikimedia community, and then the Gune Wikimedia community, and of course the Dagwani itself. So we have five language communities on this call, and most of, uh, I must say, almost 70% of our community members use this uh, mobile phone to edit, and it is very crucial for us uh, as a community to uh, learn more about how we can use the mobile app effectively, uh, especially contributing to Wikipedia in our various languages. So I am super excited about this meeting. I've been trying to put this together, and you know, I'm so happy that now we've been able to find time to um, have this session. So I would like to give um, hand over the mic to Amal. Amal is um, is going to take us through, uh, together with her team, they are going to take us through how we can um, contribute to Wikipedia using the mobile app and soon they will, um, they will introduce themselves. So please, um, over to you, Amal. Thank you so much, uh, Sadek. I have been super excited since you texted me about giving this um, presentation. And I'm happy that I have all of the attendees here. Uh, all of your questions were like enlightening ones, actually. And I can't wait to start actually answering these questions. But um, let me just introduce, introduce myself to you first. Um, I'm Al Ramadan. I'm from Egypt. And I'm working at the foundation, at the Community Foundation, uh, as um, a community relations specialist, and I'm supporting the apps team. And that's why I'm here with you today to answer this question about how to use the Wikipedia's mobile applications for searching, editing, and reading articles. And um, maybe Tony can go on next. Uh, sure. Thanks, Amal. Very excited to be here. It's nice to meet all of you. Um, I'm Tony. I'm based in uh, Dallas, Texas, in the United States, and um, uh, I am the iOS engineering lead. Um, so I'm here to represent iOS. Uh, how about Shervani? Can you go next? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Shervani. I'm based in uh, San Ramon in California in the United, Sa United States. Um, I'm a senior uh, engineer on the Android team. Um, Carolyn, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, it's lovely to meet everyone. My name is Carolyn. I'm calling in from Brooklyn, New York in the United States, and I am the design manager across both of the apps teams. Um, so yeah, happy to answer any design questions you might have as well. Thanks for inviting me. So thank you uh, all for attending and maybe we can start by answering your questions. And these are the questions that I received until tomorrow morning. Um, Sadek told me that there are new questions. So maybe you can ask them after finishing the next one. Uh, so is it supported by Wikipedia? Yes, definitely. Wikipedia's mobile applications on both Android and iOS are supported by the foundation. The second question is, how many languages does it support? Well, um, our applications support more than 300 languages, and you can use them in reading more than 40 million articles, actually. Does it have both Android and iOS versions? Yes. Is the app user-friendly? Uh, OK, well, I can say this, because we use this a lot, but if you can, just remember the first time you downloaded Facebook or WhatsApp, and then you started to send your first text message. It took you a little bit to know, know where to go to write and find the, the um, right contact to text. So definitely any application in the world you are going to use, it's just going to need this um, first user, the minimum user experience for you to just go there and here to try search for a specific topic or read an article about something interested to you, or even eventually try how to edit through using the mobile application. So it just needs this little tour that you can take in less than five minutes, and then it will be just like a piece of cake to you. 
would I have to pay before accessing a Wikipedia application? No, you don't have actually. Um, the reason why the foundation has started to create um, the own supported applications to Wikipedia started because they, there were um, too many fake applications on the web that one of them started to ask users to even pay and subscribe to get uh, to the articles that are on the Wikipedia for free. That's when the foundation started to feel like it's a must to have our own applications. And then we are uh, we launched our applications and started since 2012. We started with the Android one. And then after a couple of months, we launched the iOS one. Does the Wikipedia app contain all projects under Wikipedia? OK, uh, no. Uh, the Wikipedia application only represents Wikipedia article, and I'm not a tech person, but I can tell that the app contains all of these projects. Uh, it will be like a bigger and it's on space and it will cause a lot of bugs than the usual, right? And then uh, there is a question about them using the same word in a language uh, or account or delicate. Uh, I can't be so sure about this, but I think that here's we can find the beauty of using Wikipedia's mobile application because while you are reading an article and you think that this is not the right use of this word, you get the option to just rephrase it and edit the article with what you think that it's working more. So whenever you are reading an article or searching for something and you find that um, it needs to have more information, that it happens to be that you're aware of this information, you can definitely add these. And the final point is, can it be used offline? Okay, there is a current project that we are working on um, to try to solve a little bit of this uh, issue. You can't edit offline. You need internet connection to edit, and you need an internet connection to search for a certain articles. But once you save these articles on your mobile, on your reading list, on the application, you can read them offline. You can have access to them at any time, read them, use them as you would like to. So um, for places that don't support like strong Wi-Fi or strong internet connection, you can just use uh, the opportunity when you are in a public place that provides Wi-Fi or internet connection and then save the articles that you are interested in and then you will have unlimited access to these articles at any time. So these are the um, questions that I received in the form of from Sadiq. If you have any other questions, you might write those um, in the chat so we can start our presentation. Yeah, sure. So um, I think we can proceed, then I, uh, I'll, I'll be able to get the questions down. Uh, do sure, you have yeah. yeah. So in this picture, we can check and see um, the shares of the uh, smartphone users in the whole world will just interested in two colors. The yellow one, the, the Middle Africa, and the red one, the Eastern Africa, and the last one represents, the last column represents the share of edits. You can see the um, color of the Middle Africa in the yellow, and then these little color of the Eastern Africa, and this is the share of edits that uh, we receive. And from the Android users. And of course, we need to work on uplifting this uh, percentage. That's why Africa actually is one of the focused areas that we are working on. And this screen, um, this screen is for the iOS shares for smartphone users. And you can see the color of the Middle Eastern Africa in the orange. And here is in this column, and the last one actually, the orange color. Can you see? It's a little percentage here for the share of edits, and we need really to work on this one too. So um, let's start downloading the app. You can see that this is a screenshot from the iOS uh, mobiles, and this is from the Android devices. So please open your devices right now and search for Wikipedia application and start downloading the app.
please install and your aunt needs us to yeah and your aunt needs us to wait a little bit we can or we can proceed to the next screen So if you downloaded the app, then um, you can start by clicking on the icon from your mobile screen, and then you will start by the onboarding process that will take you to prepare your setting for using the applications. The first screen will be providing the languages that um, you will use the app in, and uh, I like this clause very much because you get to add languages as much as you can, as much as you like, as much as you read, actually. You can use the application in English, French, and any other delegates that's available because we said previously that the app is available for more than 300 languages. So you can add the language you will be interested in uh, reading the application in. So I'll be waiting until the process of your download begin. Please write to our chat. Okay, I just downloaded mine. Yeah, I, I, I just downloaded mine too. I'm now adding the languages. Good. Musa, am I pronouncing your name right? I'm just following. Do you get the app right now? Yes, I have the app. I'm just looking for the languages to add. They are quite long, so I'm I'm searching for Grune. <laughs> Well, um, there won't be Bruni because it was just um, Sounds recently. Like you muted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I, I heard that. Okay, I, I understand. Yeah. So, so can you Bruni language, chat, please. Bruni language was approved just uh, oh, the last oh, two weeks, so <laughs> it's probably not going so to be here for, for now. But I can see the Bani language. Yes, the Bani. Yes. I can see too. That brand, yeah, just yeah. So I'll just add it and then wait for. Yeah. Uh, mm, all right. Thank you. Oops. Can you hear me now, Amma? I, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can, can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Uh, I think... Uh, yes, yes, I can hear you, Sadiq. Okay. Okay, I'm going to continue, but I can't hear you well. Okay, this is good. Thank you. Thank you, Tony, for this. I'm just relieved. Uh, no, I can just give me a little bit. Okay, how about now? Can you, can you hear me? Yes, finally. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right, great. So, um, the other um, someone from the Bruni Wikimedia Committee says um, they were trying to find um, Bruni language. 
And I was just saying that um, the Bruni, because it was recently approved, it might not be available in the list of languages yet. Aha, uh -huh. and this is good notice to be considered. Yeah, so this is something that maybe you can include uh, in your next project. Uh, yeah, can you um, email me with the detail? Just text me uh, with the details, and then we can check when we can add this one as well. And I will be uh, following with you when it's done for sure. All right, great. So I'll send you the list of languages. Yeah, and the 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 um, the most important thing that this is something you can do later. So if it's not available now to add this language, maybe when it's available later, you can just go to your settings and add it. Yeah. So. Here is the application. When you open this, after the onboarding process, you can find that there are cards when you open the app, whether you are using Android or iOS. If anyone is using um, iOS, please write in the chat because this is screenshot is from an Android device. If you want to uh, read the um, cards that's available, right? What happened in the same day? like today's date or find the common cards because you read them similar articles because you were interested in the featured article with which is the article of today and this is actually screenshot from today's application specific article that's not available on your home you can just navigate to uh, the search bar and then write the name uh, of the article or even just a specific word and then um the, the app will suggest a couple of articles that's related to this topic and you can start reading them. So, okay, is this an open mic? Rookie, are you trying to say something? Hi, Rookie, can you hear us? Maybe. Okay. Okay, we can go. So, um, as you can see from the screenshot, uh, that the board that's at the bottom of the uh, picture, the first one is explore, which takes you to know more about what the app can present to you. And then the next icon is saved. And here you can find all of your saved articles that you save to use when you are offline, as mentioned earlier. And then the third icon, which is search, where you can search for specific words and find um, the, the available articles on this one. And from here as well, you can check if there's not are enough articles about certain topic and then you can start actually create and edit this article by your own and i i think this is the main reason of why we're having this session and then the fourth icon which is edits and from here you can navigate to the world of edits by just using the mobile application it's like magic when you um, transfer from um, doing your edits on the laptop and then start using your mobile. And from more, you can find other options, including um, how to log in into your, your account or even start creating one from scratch or even navigate to your settings as well. So let's check how we can edit. By clicking on the edit icon, you can see on the screenshot uh, shot how the app uh, presents uh, how many contributions you have done before through your edits on the app. And this is my, my personal account, by the way. The last edit uh, when you have done this and the um, evaluation of the edits that you're doing, the quality of what you're presenting to the app itself. And then the app um, suggested specific edits that you can do and most users when they use this, this especially um, when I met users in the last week in Deba, they said that it becomes easier to them to do this while they are on the bus um, every day doing their usual activities um, during the day and then they can just by a few clicks 
um, add to the Wikipedia. So the first suggested edit you can do is the article description. And this article description, it gives you the chance to write a summary of an article that you have read or that you're reading to make it easy for other users to make sure that they know by just looking at this description that this is the article they, that they are looking for. It just having these um, glimpse about what the article contains, and then um, they know that this is what they are looking for. Actually, um, we're working right now on a project that will make this um, feature more easy with just choosing between available article descriptions. And I think this will be um, more helpful and will make this a way easier than it is. The second edit that could be done, which is image captions. And this could be used, especially in places where the internet connection is not very strong. So it takes time until the picture um, loads to the user. So you just can write a description for what the picture contains, the meaning, the context um, uh, itself. And also it helps users with disabilities and vision because they get to just know what it contains if they are um, can't recognize colors or this kind of stuff. And the last one you can participate while using the app is image tags and image tags helps you uh, when you search for a specific topic, find the exact picture that are related to this topic or this subject. So if you are um, seeing a picture for a form, you can write the tags. One is a form. The second tag could be um, a tree. The third one could be green. And then if anyone later who is using the, the uh, Wikipedia uh, article or even comments can search for the topic green, this picture will appear among the other choices. So the app is really simple. It's really direct and to the point uh, where you can check and use it. It just needs you to take the right uh, time, few minutes, and then you can do your edits and do your search and, um, and reading articles as well as you would like. Um, I'd love to hear if you have any more comments. Yes, sure. I do have some comments in the spreadsheet. So uh, I think most of the comments are centered around offline accessibility. So there's the question, will the app be accessible offline for translation and possibly use data um, for publishing? So um, the one is asking to uh, just do the edit while they are offline and then open the data to head publish. Yes. Okay, then they will need to open the data and then again, click the edit button on the article and then close it to write the edits that they are going to add and then hit um, uh, online and then go online again to publish, right? Mm. Okay. Yeah, they can do this, but they have, as I mentioned, as I explained, they have to open the data at first to navigate to edit and click. And then when they have the screen while um, where, where they get the space to write the edits, they can close the data. And then yeah. they can start adding the topics or the ports that they are interested in adding to this article. Mm -hmm. And this can be done offline, but this will not be published until they turn on the data again. Wow, awesome. Um, so I think I'm clear with that. If you have any other question related to that, please drop it in the comment. And let me pick the second question. If there are any other questions that was um, uh, were added to the sheet, please, you can yeah. say because- Yeah. The last yeah. time was today's morning. I, I haven't looked to the rest of the questions. Yeah, so uh, the other questions are basically, you know, I think a few of them are talking about offline. Someone was also asking, how does the Wikipedia app works? And I think we have already highlighted this. And there's another question, is it an offline app? Um, I think this one too has also been uh, answered. 
And then the third question, what would be the app usage and what uh, are some of the benefits from the app? What would be the usage of the app and what are some of the benefits using the app? So uh, with, with, with the technology that we're having um, in our time, like today, um, we use our phones most of the days. So by having the mobile application right now, it facilitates how you can connect it to the human knowledge all over the world. It facilitates how you can participate and feel like um, you're doing something for 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 all the humanity. You can start adding articles, especially for the delegates and languages that are not listed yet on, um, on the uh, application or has limited number of articles. And this is what we're all seeking to enhance and uplift um, the kind of the number of articles that are available now. And I think Sadiq, you were there in Wiki and Daba when they were talking about how they started um, editing in, um, in, the, in the language of uh, Rwanda when uh, Victor, I, I think, was um, Derek. Derek was Derek. speaking Derek. out. Yeah. yeah, he was speaking about this because he started to um, edit and then he wanted to edit in his own language. So he started to learn how to edit and then um, um, started widening the scale of articles in his own language and this is what we need this is what we are here for so if you want to um, maximize the number of articles this is what you need this is the maximum benefit that the application can present and you can do this on do, while you're doing any other activity during your day while you're um, going to your school while you're waiting for your doctor appointment and these are uh, ways I heard myself from users just like you. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I think um, there's another question inside the call. Um, can we add the app on competition dashboard to track edits? I'm not sure if I understand your question. Uh, are you referring to the outreach dashboard? Um, Daniel, could you please unmute and you know speak if that is okay? Okay, and you were also asking if we can clarify about the offline editing. So I think Amal was saying that you can turn on your data, click on the ed edit when the window, uh, the uh, edit page opens, you can now turn off your data and then edit. So when you turn, get access to internet, then uh, the edits will be updated. Uh, I don't know if I answered that correctly. And, and after opening the, the data again, you can hit publish to the edits that you wrote. Yeah, so you hit publish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Abdul, the app will open if you are offline, but some of the features might not be available. You can save articles. And, okay, I think he was trying to. Yes, uh, Abu, please go ahead and speak. Okay. Uh so concerning the edit, um, um, here the concern is that if if we are editing, okay, and we click on publish, does that mean when we click on publish and we don't have the data? So that means to load. But here in the case where there's someone who has also gone into the article to edit, would there be an edit conflict? Would yours supersede his or hers, or would the person's edit over over? Well, let me see, um, overlap yours. So what is going to be the the, the situation here? So you understand that, okay, in offline, when you even publish, I mean, is there going to be conflict or the current one that has been done is what's going to be there? I think this is a good question. Yeah, um, and I think that the edits got published by time and there are a um, number of admins who are working on organizing this process. So um, Daniel, if you wrote an edit and then you had published at the same time, that someone is editing the same article, which is not so common. Uh, if there are any misunderstanding in adding these edits, the admin uh, will be working on fixing this to make this work or present like appropriate um, edits to the same article without losing the logical meaning of the parts of the article. We have another one is raising their hands. And I'm sure um, Caroline added a link for the um, offline thing. Maybe you can navigate to this one. Thank you, Caroline, for adding this. Yeah, Mabia, please 
speak. Kindly unmute and speak. Thank you. Okay, thank you. My question is uh, about the, the if, you are, if I want to edit, there's uh, an option for me to either log in or join Wikipedia. I might use my normal Wikipedia uh, username or I need to create a different one for on the app so that I can edit. Your the, the same username and password, the same thing, I think. The same account that you're using, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Any more question? Yes, I'm um, sorry, I'm trying to raise my hand again. Um, so I'm over here. And concerning the, the dashboard, uh, so when people are editing, that means it, it can track the edits that have been made. So for instance, you know, there's an ongoing competition and people are using the app to edit. Is it, no, on the on the outreach dashboard, we are able to add like various sources of the edits or where the edits are taking place. With the app one, would we be able to have that source where we can add the app or it's going to be like the normal thing where we add just the Wikipedia and it, it just tracks the edit? Uh, so can you help me just yes. rephrase yes. this question? Yeah. yeah, I think I understand what he's trying to say. So we usually do um, competitions like wiki competitions, uh, editathon yeah. contest. Um, we use the outreach dashboard to track edit count. So he wanted mm. to know if someone is editing on the mobile app, does it count as part of Wikipedia contributions or uh, it is different? or do, do we have to add um, a mobile app version of it? And the answer is um, maybe Caroline will come in, but I think it's yes, since yes. it's still Wikipedia, it's just Wikipedia. It doesn't uh, matter whether you are editing from the mobile app or the web, so yeah. Caroline, please go ahead. Yeah, I, I have contributed to Outreach Dashboard um, uh, um, editing uh, edit-a-thons from my phone. So it, it will count. Um, I, I'm not sure if the suggested edits, so I, I think it would count as well, but definitely like if they are editing the articles and they've been registered with their username on the outreach, outreach dashboard, it should count even if they're editing from the apps. This turned to be a very good question, Daniel. Thank you for that. You still have the time for questions or shall I start um, practicing the word that Sadiq taught me today? <laughs> yes, so uh, let me check. I think there was another question that I skipped in the okay. chat. Mm. Yeah, Jasmine. Hey, Jas. Jasmine is um, our product manager for, for both apps, Android and iOS. Hi everyone, sorry for joining late, joining as early as I could, but happy to see everyone in the space. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, we are very excited to have you. Um, is there a hand? No. So the other question, I don't know how it relates to this, but let me try and pick that can varied form of the same word be used in a language to count for dialect differences? Can varied forms of the same word be used in a language to, to account for dialect differences? I don't know how this uh, question relates to that. Actually, um, I, I answered this question at the beginning of the presentation. It's one of the received questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Abdurrahman is raising his hand. All right. Uh, Abdurrahman, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, I wanted to find out more about the, the offline team. 
I have to work with the national identification of terrorism. Uh, really, uh, with the offline, what I wanted to understand is that if your data is not on, means you can't access the app. But if, if it is possible to access the app, maybe what I've edited and then uh, whatever edit you have done will be pending until uh, your data is on. What usually uh, I'm aware of is that to edit this uh, application, all right, and then you edit whatever you are going to do. You access whatever articles you can, but your edit would not be uploaded on your platform. That's what I wanted to find out if that is possible. Unfortunately, I couldn't hear you well. Abdul Rahman, if, uh, if anyone had heard just the, the question in a clear words, maybe you can just pass this to me. Yeah, I think uh, I didn't quite get the question. Abdul Rahman, can you? Uh, just type that if that is okay. Just type it in the chat. Okay, I'll put and, it in the, the chat. All right, great. Yeah, and my team are, are explaining in the chat as well the uh, variants, the language variants as well. So, Caroline, you were saying something. Please go ahead and explain this more. Sure, yeah, no problem. Thanks, Amal. Uh, so I think the question is about language variants. So this is like if you have a language, but there are two dialects within that language um, or potentially multiple scripts within that language, the full list of all of the Wikipedia editions will include variants. And so um, if you search this list and you don't see the variant that you are looking for, it's possible that that variant is not currently available um, as a Wikipedia, on Wikipedia, so it's not supported by that language. So for instance, um, uh, their uh, Chinese is known to have uh, multiple, many variants. There's uh, maybe eight or nine different variants in Chinese and the Chinese Wikipedia supports um, a bunch of those variants, but maybe not all of them. Uh, so I believe that this is the right list. I'm gonna keep looking for something else. Uh, but if you have a specific variant that you're interested in seeing if it's supported, if you wanna write it into the chat, I can do some research and get back to you. This is so good. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, Caroline. I think that's all the questions that I have in the spreadsheet. Let me see. There was one question from Daniel. Is it possible to edit a whole article instead of the section? Instead of the sections. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, this is a question that I like because we recently addressed this. So oh, if you okay. have an Android, uh, or did, we addressed it in the, the application, not in this call. Uh, on the Android application, you can now edit a full page. On iOS, we are working on that. Um, I think Tony is on the call. Tony is like actually actively researching um, us being able to offer that on the iOS app. So if you have Android, you should be able to access it in the overflow menu where it says edit full page. Um, and then for iOS, it should be coming soon if you uh, watch the iOS updates page. Um, I'm sure Amal either has shared it or can share it. Uh, you'll be able to see when that it becomes available. Yeah, Great. sure. So yeah. Abdurrahman is asking on the uh, chat, is it possible to access article offline such that one can edit as much as possible? You can access offline the articles that you saved before, that you saved earlier when you um, had an internet connection. Uh, so it will be uploaded uh, when data is turned. 
no, the article has to be saved already in the in the app when you have an internet connection. I actually I have a comment Please. on that. Um, so you can access the article while offline to read it, but you will be unable to edit it while offline for iOS at least. Um, you need a so I guess one like one possible way around it is on the article there's an edit pencil icon. You can tap it. It'll go to a page of just wiki text, but you need an internet connection to load that page. And so what I think we what we talked about earlier in this meeting was you could possibly load that page up, then go offline. And while that wiki text page is up, you can edit it while you're offline, back around the phone, um, back on the app on the phone. And then once you come back with an, to an internet connection, then you can tap next in the editing flow. And then that, that should allow you to complete your edits. But I did want to say that uh, there's a chance that the system, we don't have any sort of like draft persistence on the app. Like there, we don't save any kind of draft of your edits. So there's a chance that when you background on that screen while you're offline, uh, the system could terminate the app if it needs resources. So it's, there's still a chance you could lose your edit. Um, so just a warning for that. We, uh, it's good feedback to take though that, um, you know, I don't know, Jasmine, if you want to speak to like uh, the ability to save a editing draft, but um, that's kind of the current state of things for iOS and sounds like Android too. Yeah, I was just going to share why, because I think this is a great question. And for me, if I wasn't actively working on the product, I would say, well, why can't I edit offline? And then when I get online, why isn't it published? Um, the reason for that is because there's so many wonderful editors like you all that are editing at the same time. And so sometimes when you come back online, uh, the edits that you made, it may not be to con uh, content that's relevant anymore. Someone may have already made that change. And so then you would run into an edit conflict um, I know there are lots of people within the organization trying to figure out this uh, challenge of what if someone wants to edit offline, but what if we do run into a problem where there's an edit conflict? We haven't been able to figure out that one out because it is really like complicated and we don't want to like accidentally revert changes that someone already made. But it's a really good question um, that we are thinking about. Uh, but it's not like an easy problem to solve. Great, thank you so much. Um, any more question? Please feel free to ask all your questions. And I also wanted to uh, ask about the Wikifundi. Uh, I know there was this uh, product that um, Wiki in Africa introduced, uh, Wiki Fundi, that allows people to edit, uh, volunteers to edit uh, offline. And then when they get um, access to in internet and everything goes um, to Wikipedia. Uh, I don't know how uh, accessible it is uh, and if they are still working on the device or if it's still being used, but I, uh, I, I, I was in one of the presentations at Wiki Indaba where um, they spoke a lot about the Wiki Fundi and how they are able to allow um, people with limited or no access to internet edit Wikipedia in an offline mode. Um, do you have any idea about that and what kind of technology do they use? I know uh, there's also Kiwix uh, offline for internet in a box that people can access Wikipedia offline, but they cannot edit. But with Wikifundi, uh, I think they were specifically saying that people can actually edit in, in an offline mode and then get the articles like published or edit published um, later when they have um, access to internet. Would you mind writing the name of that product in the chat or somewhere yeah. so we can, oh, I see it, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, Tony, do you know about this one? 
No, I just searched real quick. So (laughs) we can look into it. Like, this is great to see. I don't know if anyone else on the call uh, or from the team knows about it. If not, I can commit to you that we'll uh, definitely at least look at it because it's um, interesting. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, we don't have the we have offline like Helix where you can read articles that you save. Um, not the whole entire collection, of course, at once, like you need to actively save which ones, but not, uh, anything like WikiFundy. So we'll, we'll definitely look into it. Yeah. And I think the, um, uh, internet in the box device, uh, that is built on the QX platform is also very, very useful to our community because, um, there are people who may not actually want to edit uh, either online or offline, but they just want to have access to Wikipedia anytime. And this is a device that I'm really um, interested in. I'm very passionate about. I've gone through the deployment training and documentation, helping with um, Stefan at uh, Kiwix. And I actually have the device myself, which was sent to me uh, by the Wikimed Foundation in Canada. And now we want to, to be able to add um, like, indigenous language wikis. Um, so the device can take uh, a whole Wikipedia English that you can access without the need to even make any attempt to update any content. Everything goes uh, is updated by them. And there are other resources like Khan Academy, TED Talks and videos all uh, added into the device in an offline mode. So all you need to do is just connect your hotspot and then enter the username and password. If, this uh, password and then you'll be able to connect you now be able to choose like which content you want to access like read not edit per se so if we can think about this also for the mobile app uh, i know there's a way to edit uh in an off uh, to you know read in an offline mode but um you have to do something as you uh, you explain you need to be able to open your internet before you access it and now turn it off so you can read it offline. But for their device, it's just like that. You just connect it. And then you are on Wikipedia. You can access anything that you want to access without the need for any internet connectivity. All you need is just the access to power. Yeah. Yeah, Stefan, you Thanks for sharing this. Are there other... Um, products that come to mind that you wish we would take into consideration on the apps or are there features that exist in the apps that um, you are like, please don't mess with these features because we like these features. Well, um, I just want to, I don't know, there are other, um, educational resources that allows people to, you know, view them in an offline mode, even if it's on the mobile app, I think Android. So um, for people like uh, communities like ours, you know, we will need um, this kind of uh, technology where even when you are on the mobile app, you should be able to still open the application without any internet. I don't know how possible it can be for (laughs) both Android and iOS, but if the uh, internet in a device works for people like uh, 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 like those who live in areas where there's no access or limited access to internet. I think there should also be a way around it where Wikipedia or the development team can develop a tool like that specifically for Wikipedia, but they have other resources added. But if we can have this kind of devices where people either they download the application or uh, a a web-based app on their desktop so they can always like read wikipedia any article on wikipedia even if they don't want to edit they should just be able to edit it so that's all that i'm trying to propose if that is possible thank you And um, I'm happy with this meeting because it just created um, 
some of the projects that we can use in the future. So now you know um, that the, the, the um, apps team in the foundation is working to just be connected with the users everywhere in the world and you know how to get in touch with us. So at any time, if you have any ideas, would like to um, have a, a lighting talk that, like this one, please, you can email me at any time. So. Sure. Um, so Musa, uh, your hand is up. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to find out how um, uh, editing using the app is regarding IP address blocking. Because I just observed that I try to uh, uh, log in using the, the app and I just got this message that um, my account has been blocked or something like that. Then I tried editing uh, the normal with the usual way without using the app and I was good to go. I'm, um, and uh, I'm a bit confused about what's happening right now. Okay, I think a few of us can answer from different points of view with IP, <laughs> the IP block. So I can share from my perspective. Um, so we, this is a challenge across platforms. It's a, a problem. Of course, we see it more with mobile because people move to different locations within their, uh, on their mobile device. And so this can happen on mobile web or the apps. Um, this isn't really anything we can necessarily control within the apps when an IP block happens. Um, this, of course, is like another user who felt like there was some um, vandalism that was happening from that location. And so they blocked that IP. And so we have like a large project and maybe someone already shared it. If not, I can share it. But there's a lot large project happening across the whole foundation around um, like addressing IP blocks happening and IP masking. Um, so I'm hoping that in time, like you won't experience that, that happening soon. I don't know if maybe Shervani or Tony can explain from a technical perspective uh why that happens or if there's any other like details someone else wants to add from what I already shared I can attend a little bit um so usually when IP blocks happen it doesn't mean you have made a mistake and you have been blocked it is in that general area of that wi-fi address um, that someone has uh, had a block or the group of users in that IP address uh, location have had a block. Um, we're trying to zero in into this problem so that not everyone is affected, but just the person who actually committed some uh, wrong edit and got blocked. Um, but until we resolve this issue, uh, maybe uh, attempting from a different location or creating an account, like we have a link in the chat, if you can attempt that, um, that'll be a short term fix. But once we get into detail of the IP masking project that Jasmine mentioned, um, you'll not be affected if it's not directly you who has committed that kind of edit. We should start working on this like soonish. So you should hopefully see some changes within the next few months. It does kind of Hello? sound like maybe the web blocked behavior is different than the apps. It could be what they're running into as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it can vary, honestly, Tony, because I was at a conference and my IP was blocked and then I could edit on the apps but I couldn't edit on mobile web. And then I went somewhere else and then it was like the opposite problem where like on mo mobile web I could edit but not on the apps. And so I think just some of the changes we're about to make with temporary accounts is gonna solve this problem. It's hard to diagnose unless you're like physically there and can troubleshoot the problem because 
it just it really just depends yeah I see it like these IP addresses could be changing just by the nature of which platform you're using it on um, yeah, I can see how temporary accounts would help with that. Yeah. Um, Musa, I think your question has been answered. Oh. Musa, your question, has it been answered? Yes, yes, it's been answered. Thank you very much. All right, great. So we are two minutes past time. Apologies for that. Uh, I don't know if there's any more questions, but please feel free to reach out to um, Amal. Um, if you have other questions, you can just let me know that I can forward to them. Um, thank you so much for your time, Amal and team. Uh, we are really excited to have you here, and we hope that we'll be able to contribute moving forward on the mobile app and also encourage other uh, African contributors to use uh, the mobile app. And I know there's another schedule, um, general meeting uh, or office hour with the team again, and we'll be there as well to learn more. Um, we are very, very happy as, uh, to have you here and we look forward to engaging you more. And I'll also relay some of the feedback that I will pick from the team. We'll make, um, um, we'll have an editor tone training on that, and then we'll be able to figure out things that can be changed or improved on the mobile app, especially the user interface. since myself i'm going to be doing it for the first time so we'll give you more feedback on that and how best you, you can uh, some of the things that you can change and how best it can help us contribute more to the uh, wikimedia uh, wikipedia in dagban and all the other sister languages that we currently contribute to um yeah if there are no more questions let me see um mm, no more questions so thank you so much once again and any more question? Anything? Last minute thoughts before we hang over? No? Any closing remark from you, Ama, and your team? Thank you so much for having us. And we're looking forward to see more of you at our offsite, at our office hour that will be on the next 24th of March. Um, I guess the invitation already reached you, so you're more than welcome to attend. I will be waiting for you all. Great. All right. Okay. Until then, see you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks you all for coming. Bruni, Mori, Kusar, all the language communities. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all. It's great to meet you. <laughs>